Welcome to the Archaeology and Metal Detecting Magazine Weekly Newscast. Good evening everyone, Dave Sadler here from the Archaeology and Metal Detecting Magazine with another week of news uh, from around the world. Four great stories this week again. Uh, one of them involving a former guest of the uh, All Metal Mode UK podcast. So we'll get on to that moment sadly. So off we go. With the skull of a giant prehistoric buffalo has been discovered in a quarry. Uh, the rare buffalo skull has been discovered during a routine visit to Cambridgeshire Quarry. The bones found by a local fossil hunter are particularly precious as it belongs to a species which are now extinct. So, uh, yeah, we've got the picture of the buffalo skull. We've got uh, a great video uh, on this page on ITV News with uh, some scientists looking at uh, the buffalo skull and discussing it in depth. There's also uh, an image of the paleontologist cleaning her skull up and obviously uh, preserving it and what not. And we've got some other great pictures as well. One of some fossilised teeth. Uh, absolutely love things like this. Anyway, the buffalo skull, it was found in March in Cambridgeshire and it's not actually seen the light of day since the Ice Age. So it's been buried for 150,000 years. The bones were discovered in a quarry by a local paleontologist, J.B. Jordan. He said, usually you just come across half the skull here and there, maybe the odd horn corner as well, but this time we found the whole skull. The skull actually belongs to uh, an adult bison priscus, a giant prehistoric buffalo, uh, which would probably have stood around 2 metres tall and weighed around 2,000 pounds. Uh, Jamie believes the previous found skull fossils belonging to the same skeleton and he hopes to put the skull together, preserve it and display it in a museum in Cambridgeshire. So pop along to uh, to that on the ITV news and look for Skull of Giant Prehistoric Buffalo Discovered in a Quarry. <laughs> Next up today we have, uh, well it's a story that's been all over the internet through media sources. Uh, from the BBC and onwards, but I've chosen to visit the Daily Mail online or for this particular article. Rome era tombs filled with human remains and adorned with colourful funeral paintings have been discovered in Egypt. Archaeologists discovered two ancient tombs at the Bir al Shagala in Egypt. The tombs are made in different architectural styles and built from mud brick. Each tomb is decorated in vibrant funeral paintings which depict mummification. And you can actually see these images uh, and the colours all in their glory uh, on the, well, I suppose if you look anywhere, uh, the Associated Press have um, put the images out and about and obviously the different media have picked them up, uh, but in particular, the his, you know, the coloration of that. I've been to Egypt and I've seen, been in some of the tombs uh, in the Valley of the Kings and whatnot. And it's it's absolutely amazing to see the the colouring that's still there, and uh, also watching the um, archaeologists at work actually uh, looking at preserving them for the future, uh, because obviously when they've been sealed and had nobody access them for several thousand years, then it's gonna keep it until obviously it's opened and the air gets to it and such like, and then. Um, things start to deteriorate. Anyway, each of these tombs is decorated with vibrant funeral paintings, though much of the artwork has been lost at times. According to the Egypt's Ministry of Antiquities, the paintings once illustrated the process of mummifying the deceased. So, uh, yeah, we'll crack on down. Uh, more images. It looks like uh, this could be actually two people guarding a throne. Uh, the, the bottom of the throne base uh, seems to be a lion with a red cushion on it and then the Above that, it it, uh, it disappears. It's got none of the original artwork left, um, or, or the wall, in fact. Uh, archaeologists then revealed another Roman era discovery early this month from the Egypt, Egyptian west coast. Recent excavations uncovered the ruins of a sprawling Hellenistic fortress constructed more than 2,000 years ago. Researchers say that the ancient fortress was built to defend the port of the Red Sea coast with three large courtyards and numerous structure that housed workshops and stores. 
Inside the team also found trash heaps filled with terracotta figures, coins and even the fragments of an elephant's skull. So we, we then asked ourselves what could new discoveries in the Nile Valley reveal about ancient Egypt and researchers of the University of Chicago uh, who recently discovered two ancient buildings in South Egypt. They reveal much of the country's history but they also left archaeologists with a new question. The preservation of one of the buildings is curious to researchers who find it odd that the building wasn't stripped of materials after it believed to be abandoned. The trend at the time was to take the building and any useful materials, materials when abandoning them. But the building was left untouched. This is a strange considering that wood, wood was a rarity in the region. Researcher Nadine Moala said it's such a unique style we've had a hard time finding architectural parallels because no other settlement in Upper Egypt has such extensive remains from the time period. We've learned so much and there's still more to come. So again, you've got uh, you've got videos and you've got numerous pictures uh, of archaeologists working on the remains uh, of the building, uh, maps of the area itself, and uh, it, it looks fantastic. But uh, as I say, this Daily Mail online um, article, it, 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 I've found it is the uh, the best of the information I've been able to find. <laughs> There's been an incredibly rare find in the Western Isles of Scotland, a prehistoric forest. Uh, archaeologists have found evidence of early human activity at a submerged prehistoric forest in the Western Isles. Lionaclete in Ben Bu Ben Poof, here we go, Ben Bicula. Why can't they just have normal names? Very English anyway. Is one of more than twenty recorded sites of ancient woodland that once grew in the islands. The remains include an early butchery site and stole tombs used for preparing food. Archaeologists have described the discoveries at Lion Cleet as extra special. They found the remains of the area where animals had been butchered for food during studies of the last year. And uh, it's a big site. Looking at the aerial images, um, the volunteers mapping the area have got, uh, got a, a massive area of land um, set out. Uh, with obviously rope, uh, sorry, string and such like to to mark out the area. Uh, the Scottish Coastal Archaeology and Problem of Erosion Trust, a charity that works out of University of Saint Andrews, were alerted to remains by a local resident. Again, we'll go through numerous pictures uh, with scale and such like uh, on them, so you can see exactly the size of them. One being a quartz flake preserved against the bone it was used to butcher. Uh, another prehistoric saddle quern stone was found at the site. That's a photograph in situ, by the way. And then you've got uh, other images. One of the uh, the lady who actually alerted the archaeologist to the find. A red interior of prehistoric willow root revealed in a freshly cut sample. A uh, sub-fossilised branch with trig twigs. Trigs, I work with them. <laughs> uh, the remains of a wall at Li uh, Lionaclete. Archaeologists believe the site included the possible remains of dwellings. Uh, and another aerial image. And honestly, it's, it's, it's quite astounding the size of this site that they're looking at. There's 30, 40 bodies within it and it doesn't even begin to fill the area itself. Um, the car Rob, bleh, when radiocarbon datings have been processed, they'll write up the story of Lionaclete and review what further research could be done at the fantastic site. This will involve the local community, uh, who will have a critical role in monitoring the site for inevitable further exposures of archaeological remains along the eroding and dynamic coastline. So yeah, have a pop along to that one. That was uh, again all over BBC News, especially this week. And to end this week's uh, newscast, we go back to uh, what we discussed last week, and uh, maybe last week it might be the, the week before, and uh, one of the uh, all. Metal Mode UK podcast guest Chris Langston of Metal Detecting Holidays. This is, uh, well, it is directly to do with him, but uh, this is about a man who's uh, taken his 
partner uh, metal detecting on the site and uh, before they've gone over there they've uh, he's dealt with Chris himself and they've buried an engagement ring to let her discover while metal detecting so it's a very romantic ending to the tonight's show Jamil Swainson from Buckinghamshire hid his ring for his girlfriend Harriet she found the sapphire and diamond ring in the ground with a metal detector Harriet thought it was just an activities day and was speechless after the proposal he planned it as she had very fond memories of metal detecting with her grandmother uh, during the session as well she found numerous other things uh, an 18th century penny, musket balls, a silver sixpence and a silver Victorian locket she then came across a metal box shaped like a military drum when she opened it there was a hessian sack inside where the ring was hidden and thankfully she agreed to marry him so you've got all the images of uh, the metal detector in taking place uh, the engagement ring on the uh, the finger of Harriet which also <laughs> gives a good um, advert for the company whose metal detecting they are using uh, I, I know I've, I've heard of this occurring once before in the past um, and, and again it was you know it's 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 a bit of fun it's uh, well obviously it's very very romantic and uh, big up to uh, Chris Langston at Metal Detecting Holidays for uh, for organising this uh, which took place at one of his sites in Shropshire so uh, there you go other than that this week obviously there's lots of other things gone out about if you uh, if you look for the Archaeology and Metal Detecting magazine on Facebook our site is regularly updated 30 to 40 times a day with uh, news stories from around the world with videos and obviously our own input uh, from the Archaeology and Metal Detecting magazine website so uh, give it a look or you can follow us on Twitter uh, ArchMDMag or obviously onto our website www.archmdmag.com and uh, all other details around the site will uh, be able to listen to any moment now when we do our end piece so thank you all for listening and please contact me on editor at archmdmag.com if there's anything you'd like to uh, include or anything else you'd like to do for ourselves or any uh, criticism cr constructive criticism of this week or any other show so thank you all for listening good night The Archaeology and Metal Detecting magazine acts as a hub for information, offering articles from archaeologists, detectorists and other specialists throughout the genre. Featuring many links, event info and news articles associated to archaeology and metal detecting. We also offer professional review services and promotion for books, resources, videos, documentaries, gadgets, equipment and much, much more. The magazine is run by the Archaeological and Metal Detecting Community for the Archaeological and Metal Detecting Community. So come visit us at archmdmag.com. That's archmdmag.com. And check out information from our media section with all the latest content, news from the Archaeology Channel, podcasts, and the YouTube channels that feature the now legendary Digger Dawn, The Man with the Hat, and Archeo Duck, just to name a few. If you would like to offer an article, link or inquire about other services, then pay us a visit at archmdmag.com and drop us a line.